Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace. Alright guys, how's it going? Welcome back. Well, we're currently at a services, a road chef to be precise, on the side of the M5, and we're heading down to Bristol to pick up something quite interesting. I'm genuinely quite excited about this. I've agreed to buy a 2008 Volvo XC70. Now, if you've been watching this channel for a while, you'll know I'm a big fan of the XC70. I bought a 300,000 mile 2004 D5 about, well, I think it was this time last year. In fact, it was, it was this time last year. I bought it on, was it either Christmas Eve or Boxing Day or some, something, sometime around Christmas anyway. I spent quite a lot of money on that car, but I took it all the way up to Switzerland and then down to Lake Como in Italy. Anyway, the one that we're buying today is a 2008 D5 automatic, and it's done around a third of that miles. It's done 105,000 miles. So I mean, in the Volvo world, it's barely broken in. I got an email last week from a viewer who no longer lives in the UK, and this was his car in the UK, and he's used it for the last few years as a, what do you call it, like a holiday car, basically. He'd use it every time he'd come over. And it's now surplus to requirements, so he asked me if I wanted to buy it, so I immediately said yes. I've agreed to buy it for just £1,500, so it sounds quite cheap, but it does have a number of issues. I can't quite remember what the issues were now, but there was a bit of a list. Anyway, it's starting to rain, so we're about an hour away. Let's get back on the road. I'll see you there. Well, we're here in quite a nice part of Bristol on a blustery, windy, rainy day, and here's the car. I haven't really had a chance to look around it properly yet, but so far, so good. The tyres are all pretty good. We've got Pirellis all round with about three or four mil of tread. The wheels could do with being refurbished. I quite like it in silver. There's no privacy glass. There are two keys, but one's being forwarded to me in the post. It's got the black leather interior, which always ages better than the beige. I find that the, uh, the lighter leather interiors with age always crack and look really worn out. Whereas this looks pretty good. It's quite a high spec as well. Got heated seats, powerful mirrors. I'm quite looking forward to driving this back. It's a nice clean car though, isn't it? I'm quite pleased with this already. Could possibly do with some new boot struts there. Don't have full confidence in that. Got a load liner. They're good cars these, aren't they? Good safety ruler. Yes. Oh, got a bit of mould going on here. I think it's just because it's been parked up for so long. It does need a good old clean. I think the run back up to Manchester should do it some good. So, that's that. Why do postmen always wear shorts? We're always in shorts, aren't they? Even if it's snowing. So I've got about a two and a half hour drive back, so it should give me plenty of time to see what it's like and get to know it a little bit better. I do like a Volvo Estate. I think what I'm going to do then is head straight to my mechanics, get them to give it a service, fresh MOT, and just a general check over and see what it needs. Then I'll dig out my email and see what David told me about it. He did say there were a few issues, namely one's just come back to me, which does explain the boot mold. He said that the boot leaks water around the, the boot seal, so I can get a new boot rubber. There are a few other bits and pieces as well, but Nothing too serious. So, yeah, let's hit the road, Jack. Right, guys, well, I've got a quick sit rep for you. I've pulled over at Gloucester Services, which, by the way, is the fanciest service station I've ever been to. It's worth the trip just for that. All service stations should be like that. Forget your Burger Kings and your KFCs. That's much more, much more civilised. Anyway, the old Volvo. I've probably done, I don't know, about 50 miles in it, and it's been perfect. When you start it, it says maintenance overdue. And there's also, well, after about 10 miles into the journey, I got an error message, all wheel drive system disabled, service required. Now, David, the previous owner told me about that and I found an email actually. So let's just go through the known faults. It's done 105,000 miles. The wheels need to be refurbished because the lacquer started to peel. That's fair enough. The all wheel drive light comes on and off from time to time. The car is super smooth. Uh, however, the rear suspension is a bit clunky. That's interesting he said that, because I actually thought it was the front suspension that was a bit clunky. It's a little bit, a little bit knocky when you go over bumps, like it could need the, the lower arms replacing or drop links or bushes or something. 
I don't think it's a big job, but they're quite a big hefty car, these, so all suspension components do take a bit of a beating. The gearbox and engine are great, however. The leather interior is in good condition. The centre armrest has a plastic roll-down cover, which is broken. That's true. And the tailgate lets in water. I've already mentioned that. Apparently it's a common fault. Now, I was thinking while I was driving along, that could either be the rubber seal around the boot, or it could be leaking in water from one of the lights. Or it could be, could be the rear glass, but that would be a bit unusual. It's one of those three things. And that, I think, is about it. So I think I'm going to stick to my original plan. I'm going to take to my mechanics first, get them to give it a service, an MOT, get them to scan it and see what they think that all-wheel drive system issue is. But if they can't fix it, then I might need to take it to a Volvo specialist. In the past, I've always used Trevor Burgess, who are not too far from me, and they're excellent. So I might take it there. I'll ask them to sort out the clunking suspension and the boot leak. And then, yeah, I think I've got a, a decent car here. I was looking through the service history, and it is full. But, but, there's no mention of a cam belt change. And I know these are due at 10 years, regardless of miles. And it's now, of course, 15 years old. So, I mean, it is comprehensive. But, no mention of the cam belt. The last service was done at 100,000 miles, 100,489, and it's now done 105, 300. But that was in uh, July 21, so I'll give it a service, and I think I'm going to have to do a cam belt. Unless there's a sticker under the bonnet, I've not looked yet. I shall enjoy drinking my farm shop hot chocolate, and I'll catch up with you later on. Cheers, guys. Well, it was all going a little bit too well. I think I've ridden my luck with these kinds of journeys for long enough. I had to have a breakdown eventually. I'm talking about the car, by the way, not a mental one. Before I explain my troubles, I just need to say a big thank you to today's video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace. From websites to online stores, to marketing tools, to analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build and run your business. We're currently building a new website for the online store. I just want to make it look more professional and, uh, I guess, cooler. And crucially, I want it to be easy to use both on a desktop and on your smartphone. So if you need a website for your business, and I think you really must these days, I know it can seem like a really daunting task, but thanks to Squarespace, it doesn't have to be. All you need to do is head over to squarespace.com forward slash hypecortos, or alternatively click the link below in the video description, and you'll get 10% off your first website or domain name. Now have a look at this. Creating a website with Squarespace couldn't be easier. There are loads of different templates to choose from. Once you've chosen your template, you can edit and change what your website looks like just by dragging and dropping photos and your own logos and fonts and colors and that sort of thing. It really is as easy as that. It's looking great so far. We've only spent about an hour and a half on it, but it's taking shape. All I need to do next is figure out how to connect my AutoTrader system to it. Before you know it, you've got yourself a professional-looking, personalised website like this. Don't forget to use the promo code HYPECORTOS for 10% off your first website or domain name. And thanks, Squarespace, for sponsoring today's video. Right, well, this isn't the update that I wanted to give you all. My fuel light came on about 20 miles ago, so I stopped at the next services put 50 pounds of v-power in it because i thought that might help it along and it was running perfectly then when i got back in it i started it and it said move gear selector into position p and it already was in position p so i thought that's strange so i sort of wiggled it around a little bit anyway it fired straight up then when i joined the motorway it was almost like it was locked in probably third gear or fourth gear it wouldn't let me go faster than maybe 50 miles an hour i had no warning lights on at all but it just wouldn't let me go. Then eventually, after maybe five minutes of doing 48, 50 miles an hour, it put me into sixth gear, eventually, with some reluctance, and that was fine. Then I hit some traffic on the M6 around the Birmingham area, and we came to a standstill. When we eventually got moving again, I tried to put my foot down, and it was doing exactly the same thing. It just wouldn't go faster than, it wouldn't change me out of third or fourth gear. So I drove at 48 miles an hour or so until I got to Hilton Park North Services, which isn't particularly glamorous. It certainly isn't Gloucester, let me put it that way. I thought I'd just turn it off, give it five minutes, and then try it again. And now I've got back out to the car and it won't start at all. I'm still about an hour from home. It's going dark, it's miserable. And nothing. It now says, quite frustratingly, DSTC service required. Maintenance overdue, which I always did. But this is the worrying one. Engine system service required. Not exactly sure what that means. I think in real terms, it means I'm gonna to have to call a breakdown truck, which isn't what I wanted. Oh, I hate cars sometimes. It was all going too well. Anyway, I thought I'd give you a quick update. 
And we're back in the old of love. And I may as well get this out of the way early on. I've massively overspent, massively, to the point where I kind of wish I'd never bought it in the first place. This car has caused me considerable heartache, inconvenience, and financial strain. Oh well, you can't win them all, can you? Let me tell you the full story then. I'm just trying to retrace my steps. I can't remember the last time we spoke. <laughs> yes, I can. We were at Hilton Park Services, because I'd, uh, well, I'd broken down in Birmingham and I. If you remember, it wouldn't let me get it out to park. I think it didn't even recognise it was in park. It was a weird fault, but it wouldn't even start the car. So I called my brother back, who'd shot off ahead of me. He had to turn around and pick me up. I went inside and paid the parking fee for 24 hours, which was about 15 quid. I called Green Flag or the RAC or whoever I've got insurance with, and they helpfully wouldn't come out to me. So it was getting late and dark and miserable, and I was getting uh, less and less patient and tolerant. So I called a company called Motormove, who I use, sadly, very frequently. They're based in Stockport, I think, or somewhere in Manchester. Anyway, for £300, they came out and picked it up. Now, I'd lost the will to live at that point, so I just hid the key in the car. And I thought, well, worst case, if somebody can actually get it going, they're welcome to it. Anyway, the next day it turned up at my mechanics and it sat there for about two weeks. My mechanic didn't really know what was wrong with it. It turns out there was a fault with the, with the gearbox control module or something, the gearbox ECU. Something had melted, which is never good, is it? In the end, I used Motormove services one more time and got it trailered up to a Volvo specialist up in Mottram called Trevor Burgess, and they're really good. I should have just gone there first, to be honest, but anyway, you live and learn. They sorted out my melted ECU. In fact, they found a second-hand one from somewhere and reprogrammed it and fitted it and all that sort of stuff, and they also fixed the fault with the four-wheel drive system. Do you remember how it would flash up to say four-wheel drive system inactive or, you know, words to that effect? Well, they sorted that as well. But, but, that didn't come cheap. After that, I took it back down to my mechanic for the standard pre-sale prep, so it had a clean MOT, a service, and whatever else it needed. And it needed some other bits as well. So my bill at the second mechanics was quite high as well. After that, oh, there was one bit of good news, actually. I thought I might have to do a cam belt, but when I looked under the bonnet, it had been done. I think it had been done at 90,000 miles, so that's good. Oh, I nearly forgot as well. Do you remember there was a leak in the boot? I don't mean the vegetable, I mean a water leak. It needed a new boot seal, so that was done and I took it to the Valeters, the lads over at Tameside Detailing, and they completely dried everything out. So, touch wood, we're all all right. The last thing I had to do, which I had done yesterday, was the wheels. If you remember, they were quite, well, all the paint was starting to flake off, so I had them freshly painted in some fresh silver paint, and they now look quite bright. The whole car's all right, really, but I've just fallen out with it. I'm ill with it, to be honest. And it got me thinking, there are several brands which exist, which are still trading on the name for reliability. And I don't think that's deserved. And Volvo, in my experience, is one of those brands. People always think of them as being a really tough, dependable workhorse. Well, in my opinion, they don't really deserve that reputation. They're quite fragile and very costly to fix. Anyway, then I'm going to park up somewhere scenic and I'll talk you through my costs. You might want to pop the kettle on for this. Here we go then, here we'll do. That's it. Take it that poor horse. There we go. Perfect. It cleaned up nicely though this, I will say that. And it does drive very well. I just don't like it anymore. Okay then, right. I think it was a long time ago this, and I've bought several cars since then. Several dozen cars since then. I think it was £1,500. That rings a bell. I should count some fuel, shouldn't I? So we'll say £100 to get there and back. Oh. The motor move bill was £300. Parking at uh, Hilton Park was 15 quid. So what exactly did it have at Trevor Burgess? At Trevor Burgess, this is one good thing about going to Trevor Burgess. You get a really nice handwritten invoice. I was going to say factura. Invoice. It's got very nice writing. Almost softens the, uh, the blow of the £1,351 bill. So we've got 13, that's £1,300. 1, 3, 5, 1, and 80 pence. So it had uh, Volvo XC70 to assess why the above vehicle would not come out of park. Found wiring issue which had uh, damaged the module for the gearbox. There we go. Uh, he then wanted us to investigate why the all-wheel drive was not working. Problem with the pump on the rear diff. Okay. So it had a new used module. That was £140. A software download, £47. Labour. £320, some wiring, 
and four splices, £12. One diff pump, this was quite expensive, £394.50. One filter, £43.80. Some Haldex oil, £18.80. One mitt whatever it was it was 30 quid some more labor 120 pounds so 1351 and 80 pence we've got a clean mot though the bill at my other mechanics so we've got recovery to trevor burgess that was 70 pounds a batch oh it needed a battery that was 117 pounds oil filter eight pounds 50 oil 38 pounds two front tires 240 pounds uh, asked them to match, and they were decent brands. Labour 50 and an MOT test fee 40 pounds. So my total there was 66838. Hope you're enjoying your cup of tea while I'm reading this. Oh, then we've got the cost of the wheels. The wheel refurb cost me 190 pounds. Now I've just seen the figure, I do feel a bit sick, actually. This old trusty, dependable Swedish workhorse now stands me at 4,010 pounds and 18 pence. It isn't the end of the world though, because I'm thinking, I think it might be a five grand car. Now it looks the part and all the faults are fixed. I think it could be 4995. The mileage isn't silly. It's had its cam belt done. The history is very good and it's just had three grand spent on it. So yeah, there might be a little bit of profit in it after all. Well, I think that's about it. Hope that didn't uh, depress you too much. I'm going back to work now to try and advertise this and sell it and get my five grand in for it, hopefully. So I think that's about it. I always find it's always best not to beat yourself up in these situations. I did it with the best intentions, so, oh well. Right, cheers guys. Thank you once again for watching. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't done already. You can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. I'm out of breath, I'll leave the link below. Cheers guys, see you next time.